Hello everyone, my name is Simon Lowell and um, I've recorded this video at home today um, to hopefully help you in choosing your music for your wedding. It's always a very difficult time and I think it's very important to bear in mind right at the start that the music for your wedding should be something which is very personal to you, something which you enjoy. There are millions and millions of magazines and videos and YouTube tracks telling you what to choose and in my experience quite often people will recognize a tune but not necessarily know its name or they'll be told a name and not necessarily be able to put that name to the music. So I thought if I just played you a few short clips from different pieces which you could use as a wedding um, then uh, I hope that might help. This isn't a definitive list in any way but it's just a way of helping you to think along the journey as you discover what's right for you. Um, there is a sheet that we've printed off with it which I'm sure that one of the clergy will be able to give you or certainly give you the link. Um, but in the meantime, <coughs> excuse me, let's, uh, let's just explore. So the things you've got to choose, you've got to choose a piece of music to come into, you've got to choose a piece of music to leave, possibly have a bit of music during the signing of the register, and some hymns, usually two hymns, maybe three, depends on uh, what, what your choice is. So those are the things you have to think about. So let's start off with the entrance of the bride, that big moment at the start of the service. So there are, in my experience, um, there are a lot of brides, a lot of girls who only want to be married to the traditional music. Now that music is the Bridal March uh, by the German composer Wagner. And it sounds like this, and I'm sure you'll recognize it. <laughs> So that is the Bridal March by Wagner and I suppose that piece has been played more than any other at weddings. However, if you want to be a little bit different, uh, my first port of call would be some of the lovely trumpet tunes that are around. So I'm going to play you first of all the Trumpet Voluntary by Jeremiah Clark. It's also often called the Prince of Denmark's March. It was made famous, I guess, um, at the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana in St Paul's many years ago. Um, but it's still very popular today and it sounds like this. Again, that might be quite familiar to you, but if not, um, that's what it is. It's a trumpet voluntary by Jeremiah Clark. Now there's another lovely trumpet tune uh, by the Henry Purcell, which uh, is very well known as well, if I can find it. Um, and I think this might be another one that you, you might well enjoy. I will be able to find it in a second. And it sounds like this. <laughs> the trumpet tune by Henry Purcell. Then there's another trumpet tune, uh, it's the Prelude to the Te Deum um, and it's by a French composer called Charpentier and I think, I can never quite remember, but I think this was used um, as a TV theme tune at some time many years ago, so you might recognise it, but it's a jolly tune. <laughs> So that's the prelude from the Te Deum by Charpentier. Now, you can never go wrong with Handel. Handel's music works really well for all sorts of things. Um, and this piece, which is a piece uh, from the water music, it's called the Hornpipe from the water music. And this would work really well to come into, but it would also work really well to leave. Uh, you Again, you may recognise this. Here we go. <laughs>
Okay, so that's a horn pipe from Handel's Water Music. Coming in, going out, works both ways. Now, there's also a lovely piece by a German composer called Karg Alert, Nun Danke, now thank we all our God. And this piece is often recommended uh, for wedding introduction as well. And it sounds a bit like this. <laughs> Fun piece, you might like that. If not, another very popular one, let me find my book again, another very popular one is The Arrival of the Queen of Sheba, uh, which people like, and uh, it's a nice jolly one to skip down the aisle to, and it sounds like this. <clears throat> That's a lovely one, one of my favourites. So that's the arrival of the Queen of Sheba. Um, and here's one more trumpet tune for you by the blind English organist John Stanley. Um, this one is not so well known, but works ever so well. <laughs> So that's the Trumpet Voluntary by John Stanley. So, as I say, those are not definitive choices, but there are a few uh, suggestions for you uh, for pieces that you might uh, like to choose for coming into. So, have a think about that, and let's move on and have a think about pieces to leave the church to. So as with the coming in music, uh, it's the same with the exit. Um, there are a lot of brides that don't feel properly married unless they have the wedding march, Mendelssohn's wedding march, which is this. <clears throat> Everybody knows that, and I guess I can see why so many people want that at their weddings. But if you want something a little bit different, um, there are all sorts of choices. First of all, very popular um, is the Toccata by Vidor, French composer Vidor. That's spelled W-I-D-O-R, Vidor. Um, this is Fast and Furious. It's not every organist's uh, favourite piece to play, but um, those who can enjoy it. And it sounds a bit like this. Here's a little burst of it. Lots of fun. A uh, really good piece. Um, and another one in a similar vein is by another French composer, by Louis Vienne, that's V-I-E-R-N-E, -E, Louis Vienne, who wrote six organ symphonies. And this is the last movement, the finale, from Symphony No. 1. And again, it's fast and furious and a lot of fun. <clears throat> Another great piece. So uh, that's the finale from the first symphony by uh, by Vienne. So uh, I mentioned the hornpipe by uh, Handel, which you might enjoy having. Um, there's also another bit of firework music uh, from yeah from the firework music La Rejoissance, the rejoicing, uh, and you might recognise this one. This is a jolly good one.
So, if you recognise that one and you enjoy that one, that could be another fun one to choose. Um, there is a piece by the English composer William Walton, who wrote a piece called Crown Imperial, a very regal piece. And there's a wonderful, wonderful big tune in the middle. You might like to use this one. <laughs> fun. Stirs me up that one. Um, and I've also been requested quite often uh, the theme tune from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, the Ode to Joy, which is this. <laughs> Lovely, lovely piece. Um, so you might like to choose that. So there's a few. Again, I must emphasise these are only a few selections. There are so many pieces you can choose from. Um, but hopefully that might help you along the way. So that's coming in and going out. Now, halfway through the service, at the signing of the registers, um, there is the opportunity for more music. Now, you could have a hymn at this point. If you are going to engage the choir when things settle down a bit, um, you could have the choir singing. You could have a soloist. S occasionally we get people who have friends who are musical, who want to play uh, something, maybe something that we accompany. I don't know really, but there are all sorts of permutations. But if you just wanted a little bit of uh, simple organ music, um, again there are some nice simple choices for you. Um, I'm going to start off with probably the most well-known for a wedding, um, which is G.C. Joy of Man's Desiring. And I will play you just a little bit of this for you. <clears throat> Really nice piece. Um, there's another little bit from, from the water music uh, by Handel again. Uh, let's see if I can find this, which people again are very fond of, and I get asked for this quite a lot. It's just the air from the water music. <laughs> Very gentle piece, but, but very lovely. There are two other suggestions that I have for music during the signing of the register. One that gets asked for quite a lot is Sheep May Safely Graze by uh, Bach, and it sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> recognize that <clears throat> and also here's a lovely piece by uh, a composer, English composer called Rafe Form Williams and it's based on um, a lovely Welsh tune Rosy Medra uh, and it's very beautiful and it sounds a little bit like this nice and gentle <laughs> Rosy Medra, R H O S Y M E D R E, Rosy Medra, Vaughan Williams. Good. So there is a selection of pieces for the, during the signing of the register. As I say, you could have a soloist, you could have the choir, all sorts of things, just a hymn, but just a little bit, a few ideas for you there.
So the final selection that you now need to make is for your hymns. As I said earlier, normally we have two hymns in a wedding service, occasionally three. You need to just talk to uh, the priest about that and see um, what you would like. Um, I think my one piece of advice to you would be this, uh, to try and choose hymns that are well known. Um, I've experienced on many occasions couples who perhaps uh, are slightly pressurised into choosing hymns that perhaps Granny sang at school, which maybe um, 70 years ago were popular, but which now nobody knows. And there's nothing worse um, at a wedding service than uh, the organ playing over the hymn and then nobody singing at all. Um, so try and choose well-known hymns that everybody knows um, and it sort of helps along, okay? So there's big choice and again these are only a few suggestions for you. In the wedding service Psalm 23, the Lord's My Shepherd, features um, and the most popular uh, setting of, of that is called Crimmond and works really well and it sounds like this. <laughs> So, uh, you probably recognise that, um, and that, that works really well, and most people know that. So then, there's another one uh, on your list, uh, Lead Us Heavenly Father, Lead Us, and that sounds like this. Lovely hymn. Very popular indeed is Love Divine or Love's Excelling. And the thing about this hymn is there are two well-known tunes. So you can go for the early one, which sets four lines, or the more contemporary Welsh one, which is called Blindwern, uh, which sets eight lines. So the first one is the John Stainer tune. Which is very well known. Um, and this is the Welsh one. etc etc lovely lovely tune both of them are well known so I think if you chose either of them you'd have a lot of people singing along so that's always a good choice that one um, then we have another setting of Psalm 23 this time the king of love my shepherd is I will just find it um, and it sounds like this <laughs> Okay, so that's the King of Love My Shepherd is. Uh, another suggestion for you is Amazing Grace. I'm not going to play that because I think that uh, everyone will know Amazing Grace, but there, therefore it's a good one to choose because everyone will join in and sing it. Uh, Morning Has Broken is a lovely one. Sung originally, I think, by what was he called? Cat Stevens, Yousef. Um, yeah, that's a lovely one. Um, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. Um, I remember singing that one at school myself and it was always a, a fun one. This comes up a lot. Good one that, and, and again it's very popular and I think if you chose that you'd have a lot of people joining in. So then, slightly contentious choice, but quite a lot of people ask for Jerusalem and did those feet in ancient times. <laughs> fun um, and then there's praise my soul the king of heaven which is always a good one to start off with can't go wrong with that one 
Uh, Immortal Invisible is another one which is very popular. Try this one for size. I remember seeing that one at school too. Um, you might as well. Um, and one other suggestion is, which comes up a lot, is the lovely hymn Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, which sounds like this. to make me a channel of your peace, which uh, works really well. So, just a few suggestions. There are so many more, um, and I suggest that you do talk to whoever is taking your wedding um, and tell them what you want. As I say, it's just important that you choose music that is personal to you and that's going to make your day very special. Um, so I won't go on any longer. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you need to get in touch with me and talk about other suggestions, um, do please do so. Sometimes people come up with some really wonderful ideas. Sometimes you just hear a track or something that you wonder whether it works on the organ. Some things work really well on the organ, others not so well. And I think you just have to bear in mind that if you have something translated on the organ, it's not going to sound quite like the uh, original recording. But um, Anyway, best of luck with your choice and I wish you every happiness on your special day.